Oh, yes. That was the trailer for the best man, the final chapters uh, that can we have sex mommy scene uh, is my wife's favorite scene of uh, the series, which as we welcome in the creator, the writer and the director of the best man franchise, Mr. Malcolm D. Lee, a day after his 53rd birthday, belated happy birthday, brother. So good to see you. So good to have you. And congratulations on The Best Man of Final Chapters being Peacock's first original project to make it into Nielsen's top 10 streaming rankings. And it is the it is Peacock's biggest ever series debut a mark or title mm. previously held by Bel Air. Black excellence is in full effect. It is in so, it's so good to see you, man. Thank you so much for being here and uh, a lot to talk to you about, man. Um, so like, you, man. I called you earlier. Of course, man. Appreciate you taking the time. When I called you earlier, and uh, just to catch up and, and check in with you before we had this conversation, you were busy cooking. Uh, you were getting ahead on dinner. Uh, and that got me to thinking. Now, I don't cook. I don't know how to cook. I don't like to cook, and I don't know which is which. I don't know if I don't know how to cook because I don't like it, or I don't like to because I don't know how. But I don't cook. But people who do cook and cook well, you know how they'll taste the food and be like, mm, damn, I put my foot in that. You know, at what point did you and your best man family know with the best man final chapters in particular? Oh, we did that. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, we put our foot in that. When did y'all know that this was like a hit? This was special. This was a, a fitting conclusion to this franchise. Well, you know, I think you, you, you hit uh, the, the last part of your, your, your question. You know, the, when do we know? Like, I think from, from the beginning, of the, um, you know, when we first came out with, with, with the first Best Man, I, I felt like we were making a classic. Uh, and that was my intention. Um, and then everything after that, to me, had to just hit that standard or go beyond it. And when, mm -hmm. when, 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 so I was trying to do that with Best Man Final Chapters, but television shows different. There's many more episodes. There's a lot more cooks in the kitchen, um, a lot more writers. Uh, there's directors involved other than me. Advisors involved other than me, um, and a lot of a lot of opinions from the studio. So I, when we when we finished, I felt like I think it's up to the standard um, that we've done that we've set already. Um, but it really wasn't until I started hearing feedback from other people to say, "I'm like, oh my god, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good." It was and better so I was than like, we could have oh. imagined. Ca 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 caution! I was cautiously optimistic. And then, you know, you know, but of course, you know and, and, and I think that, you know, it turned out well. And I think and I think people really enjoy it and people are embraced it. So that's very, very lovely. So I don't know that I ever like, you know, was in the in the kitchen on Best Man. Uh, <laughs> I've been like, yo, th that's it. <laughs> I was kind of like, I hope it's I hope I hope they like it. You know, it's like I, it's well. I think, here it here it is, sir. And then we'll see. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you, y'all killed it. It is better, like Merch said. It's, it's like old times, only better. It's better than we could have ever hoped for, asked for, expected, or imagined. And Michael, before you ask your question, I'm gonna just give anybody watching this fair warning. It debuted December 22nd. You have had plenty right. of time right. to binge time. watch this. Some of us we, binge watched right. it when it first dropped. We not or even, binge watched it multiple yeah, right. times. So here's we your dealing with spoiler, spoiler alert. alerts. And all we that. don't care. Yeah. Like we're talking about this thing. So go ahead, Michael. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, Malcolm. Um, I have spent the last, you know, couple of weeks time traveling, because I look at final chapters, and I go back to Holiday. Then I go back to the Best Man. I said, okay, let me just go back to 1999, and see how I feel about it. Okay. So yeah. I went back. Listen to the soundtrack. Listen to the soundtrack from 1999. I heard my man Black Thought doing this thing in 1999. Uh, I went back. I read the reviews in the New York Times just to see did they have any vision? They didn't <laughs> about what this was going to become. No. And so you you said earlier your intention was to make a classic off the best yep. man. What yep. was your expectation? What was your expectation about just the reception? Uh, how long it would live, what kind of cultural relevance it would have. What was your expectation? Just think back to 1999, Malcolm. I, I, I tell you what, like, I think that the expectation was that it was, when I, when I made it, right, when, when we were in the process of making it and when we got to the editing room and 
We, we showed it to audiences, predominantly black audiences. We're like, yo, and, and by the way, made a very universal story that I felt could cross over, right? Could definitely cross over. Um, I think I was ahead of my, my cast in that knowing that it was not going to cross over. Um, and so I thought that was, what I thought was, we got a long way to go, you know, um, as, a, as a culture, as Americans, um, to accept seeing eight black faces on a movie poster that did not, was not Denzel, Eddie Murphy, or Will Smith, right? And that made, made people say, oh, I, I, I can see that. Most people who are not black would like, oh, that's for black people. So, you know, I, but, but regardless, I knew the movie was special and I knew these actors were special and they could hold the candle to any working actor at that time. You know what I'm saying? Especially the ones who were their contemporaries, the Matt Damons, the Ben Afflecks, you know, the, 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 the David Schwimmers, the, the, the Jennifer Anistons, what have you, right? I, I thought my cast was just as good as those actors. And over time, people have, have enjoyed them. So when we got the Best Man Holiday, our, our respective cast members had built their own audiences and it was a bigger opening weekend with the um, with the Best Man Holiday. And I think that was because of, yes, primarily black people coming out to see it and generation uh, the, the next generation of black people, 13 years of being reared on the Best Man on television, um, you know, made people say, oh, I wanna see that. I like that movie. I wanna see what the, what the character's doing next. But I also think that there were, you know, some um, some crossover at that time. Malcolm, you talked about the cooks in the kitchen, staying with that uh, that analogy. So, um, you had Robert Townsend, the great Robert Townsend, you had Stacey Muhammad, and you had Charles Stone. I mean, yeah. the only thing I watch about as much as the best man is paid in full. You had Charles Stone, you had all of them direct episodes of the series you directed for. But yeah. you also brought in, uh, from Insecure, uh, Dana Lynn North as EPN showrunner. And I was reading about how she came in as a fan of the franchise like the rest of us and wanted to tell deeper, richer stories about the, the, the women uh, in the show, the women characters, yeah. um, which you had the opportunity to do with a limited series as opposed to a feature film. So I'd love for you to speak to that, but also just in general, man, like what is your favorite story, discussion, argument, uh, you know, memory from this powerhouse writer's room? Um, well, you know, in partnering with, with, with Dana, it was great because, you know, she's a TV veteran, you know, really like, you know, kind of guided me through like, okay, the, the, the work is of a writer's room, you know, in building episodes, building a season, um, and then, you know, getting, building a staff. Um, that was fantastic to, um, you know, have that first experience um, go as well as it did because we had, we had some really great writers. I don't. I can't necessarily recall um, a you know a, an argument. We had we had we had plenty of discussions, but it never an argument really because I was like I kind of knew what I wanted to do. Even though like the, the other writers and Dana were, were integral in in building the season, I knew what how I wanted it to end. It was some of the stuff that's in, in between and some of the engine of how what we're going to propel this story forward that was you know very much um dana you know saying hey like we need something to kind of like have this thing going like one of which things was turning unfinished business into a movie right like that to be like a constant thing but i've never really wanted it to be way up front i wanted it to be a background kind of thing and really just tell the story of these of these characters and yes we got to be more expansive with the women but that was to be expected um, you know, uh, because there was more room and like these actresses are great, you know, and they deserve, and I pride myself in any ensemble that I've ever done, every character having their moment. Just so happens that in this, you know, show, they were able to do it, you know, with much more screen time. Um, but like arguments in the, in the writer's room, I, you know. Healthy, not, healthy not, arguments. Not, I can't, I mean, you know, it was all, listen, we were gonna have um, 10 episodes, right? Um, it ended up being eight um, because time crunch and limited, you know, availability of some actors. So 
so like that was a big a big thing that we had to go back and do and there was a lot hmm. that went down um you know in, in terms of trying to get this thing off the ground um and it wasn't all in the writer's room, the writer's room was great it was my it, being in that in that environment was really great because all these writers really loved the best man the legacy of the best man and they mm-hmm. really like gave their all now you know sometimes they get off track and they're like, well da, 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 da. i'm like no 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 harper would never do that you know, or ronald would never do that. <laughs> or jordan no 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 but but but, but, like, but here's, like here's, i created here's, them <laughs> i was saying like oh you know i really want to give jordan you know everything i want to really want her to have you know uh, everything in this thing and like dana's like what does that mean exactly like what does having everything mean does that mean having a man having a career having all and you know sometimes and that's when we came to the conclusion jordan at the end chooses herself you know like she chooses herself over you know this job that she's been been been, been coveting for so long this career that she's been you know building and it's like you know what i'm gonna get myself together and then i'll figure out what i want to do i want to i want to choose me and then i can figure out oh. what i want to do uh, with everything else and there definitely was arguments about harper and harper and jordan Harper and Robin, and a lot of a lot of Team Jordan in the in the room. It was mostly women in the room. <laughs> the, the like they should be together. They should. I was like, and we came up with this analogy about when, because I was like, no, 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 they're not going to be together. They're going to have their night. They're going to have their thing, but they're not going to be together because a he's Harper's coming off of, of this divorce, and it's just like she'd be the rebound. Right, and it would ruin their friendship in the whole nine yards. But what we came up with in the room was that, like, you know what? There was a, one of our writers, I think, coined his phrase. Her name was Zoe, and Zoe was like, you know, in a relationship, there are plants and there are gardeners, right? Hmm. And somebody in a relationship has to be the gardener to water the plant, and the plant has to be able to have room to have sun and water and growth and love and da 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 da. And both Harper and Jordan are plants. Neither one of them are gardeners. Neither one. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They can't, they, so, so Jordan's like not going to be anyone's gardener, and she she needs to be watered, and so does Harper. So like that that would be a disastrous. I mean, they look good on paper, they look good on paper, but yeah. And, uh, and, I love quick, that. Quick quick follow up on on that theme though of of showcasing. The, the the women in the series uh, in the franchise because you have more time and room to do it. I've read where M- Melissa D'Souza came to you and, and said that for Shelby she wanted more. She wanted deeper. She wanted uh, you know more layers to that character, which you said you were going to do anyway. My my That's question right. is not necessarily about Shelby, but more just about the relationship that you have not just with your fellow you know uh, creatives in the room where it happens, but also with this cast going back so long, the trust that you have in them, like how much creative input do you, do they give? Do you receive? Uh, do you, do, do it's now like, yo, are you, they're, they're basically quarterbacks that know how to run your offense, so to speak. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. You know, sometimes they have great ideas that are additive to their characters and the show. Sometimes they have ideas that are only additive to their character, and they can't okay. be, you know, be sustained <laughs> in the show. Sometimes they're not trusting what's on the page, um, mm. and knowing what what I've been planning, or you know, because you know, I, I get to think about this for years in advance of them getting it. Um, and but at the same time, yeah, of course, I, I have to trust my actors. They have to trust me. It's a two way street. You know, I, I, I give an example, like, you know, a couple of times that Morris pulled me to this, I was like, you know what? I think I need a little bit more, you know, in here about my relationship with Jasmine, right? Like, it just feels like it's it's it's, it's kind of like, you know, coming and going. I'm like, you know what? That's a good note. Let me, cause you know, it's it's, it's eight expansive episodes. You're kind of like, oh, you know what? Let me think about that. You see how I can, and, then, and there were other times where he was like, I think I should be in this scene. I was like, no, here's, and here's why. <laughs> Oh, yeah. and like you know, like you know, Terrence and and Melissa at the beginning, were like God, they shouldn't even get married at first. They should, they should get to know each other. They've only been like having sleep sleep together. And I said, guys, there's been a wealth of goodwill invested in these characters for two movies. And I, as I remember re- listening to the table read the first time, 
I was like, okay, we're 100% rooting for Quentin and Shelby to get together. Don't you worry about it. I'm going to craft it in a way that's going to work. They were like, I don't know, no, 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 no. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember, I remember this distinctly. We shot the reception. We had in the, in the wedding scene was shot like right before, and then like you know, Terrence and, and and Melissa were about you know they were like they they were just smiling, and Terrence was like, man, this was good, man, this was good. I'm like. Yeah, thank you. I know. Right? Like, I mean, like, <laughs> this is it's, what I do. It's my job to know. Right? It's my job. And, by the way, I've been through it with this cast. I've been through it with other casts where they're just like, I don't know what they're doing. I'm not sure about. And they see it and they go, Wow. I, okay. I, I I see what you were doing there. I I I I, I understand now. It's like, you just have, I, I, you know, particularly with this cast, 23 years, two movies, eight episodes. It's like the trusts should be there. And it's not always though, but it's like because people like they 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 have they have other experiences and they have other yeah you know, times with yeah. other people and the things don't turn out the way they think. But yes, in terms of Melissa, Melissa idea about doing a strip tease, that was her idea. I said, great idea, let's do that. That was wow. I mean, I hundred percent her idea. Wow. And, and that was a great call. That was a great callback. That was great. Yeah, no, it was great. You know, to the to the to the garter in the first movie yep. and like. Yeah. Right, you know, you know what? That's a great yeah. idea. Or, or, or and Candy, the Garden in the first movie, and Candy, both, both of them. Yeah, absolutely. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, you know, Malcolm, uh, Mike, and I, we've known each other for a long time. Uh, Help since the best man came out. We I think we met in 1999. So that's yeah, our, yeah. our the, the, <laughs> our relationship spans the, the best man. So we've known each other okay. for a long time. Sometimes we we text. And we win each other's and, weddings as well. Yeah, <laughs> we're in each other's curious. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we text uh, we text in movie lines. Sometimes we always talk about hey, what part was in the script and what part was just the just the moment just taking over and I I'm telling you there's so many moments. I was watching it with my wife. I was like, damn, that was so real. I wonder is that was that written that way? Did they take over and I'll take I'll say a couple of them one yeah. when they were arguing in the kitchen. Hey, you never supported me. How about that thing you did? You wanted that, and you never even went there. You know they're going back and forth uh, between uh, between Harper, uh, Harper and Robin. And, and Robin, another yeah. one, yeah, another one was Lance and LJ, where they go, where LJ is, is talking, saying, "Hey, I dare you, say it. Go ahead and say it." I was like, "Ooh, I felt that." You know, is that was that in this? Is that one of those situations where you wrote that and said trust it, or was it? Let's see the moment play out and just take it for what it what it calls for. Well, the, I, I will say the, the two scenes you're referring to were were written. You know, they were both written. It may have been a you know word or a thing changed, but not not a lot. I mean, the, see, that's what's so great about getting great actors to embody the characters and speak the words, right? They do make it their own, but it was scripted um, in that way. I think that, yeah, even even that big argument, you know, that all the friends have, at, you know, in, in the last episode. Woo, woo. Yeah, that, that Ooh, was Clarence scripted. Thomas. The Clarence Thomas one. No, Ooh, the Clarence woo. Thomas and the Kunta Kinte, that was, that, was, that was unscripted. That was, okay. that was, right. they, okay. they, 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 they started improvising on that. So, you know, and that was the, the, the yeah, that 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 particular section where they were like throwing those barbs at one another. Yeah, that was that that guy got got ugly, and the guy actually that was actually the the the, the mildest thing that 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 Tay said, you know, to her. I was like, let's uh, <laughs> let's not uh, let's not let's not let's not let's not disparage our our, our African brothers and sisters. Um, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but what? Shock but I mean, talk. but but even just that scene, though. Like, what was the energy like on set for that scene? Because that was one of the realest scenes I've ever seen in terms of like friends, right. like everything Co-sign. coming out at once. Yeah, you know, like that was the thing, man. Like that, the, we knew that, and this was a, this was a, this was a this was a network and, and a studio note because it's like okay, like what's the this is a group, this is a friend group, right? And they've been friends forever. So how, uh, you know, put the friends in crisis, you know? It's like, how, and then put, pose the question, 
are they gonna be, is this friendship gonna be able to last? So like, let's push the envelope, right? Like, Robin's gotta come in there with a head of steam, right? And like, he, she, she's controlling the, 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 the narrative. And, you know, we did handheld shots and, and whatnot. So, you know, it's it's one of those things that, you know, you, you, you give the actors the, the material, you rehearse it, you, 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 you rehearse with your, your, your camera people, and then stuff just starts happening. You start, you know, you start to, well, to like, the energy starts going, and then, then, then like you say, okay, push it, do, do, do another, and like just let it all hang out. And then like, you know, then you, then you can always pull back and do takes yeah. or whatever. But yeah, you know, it's, 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 it, and they were all game for it, and like, you know, there was actually like a little, it was, you know, kind of even crazier. Like there was one, one thing that, at the end there between Shelby and Jordan that got a little bit more heated. You know, and they, and they, you know, and they, and they just, you know, they, once you, once you turn them on and you start saying some words, it's like, like, oh, sh I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> keep it going, though. Keep it going. Keep rolling. That's, that's gold. <laughs> well, I got, I got one more thing on this theme, and then we're going to take a break and bring you back because we got some deeper stuff to get into. The one I thought you were going to say, Michael which is probably my favorite among many moments, probably my favorite moment because it was just so perfect. The last car game, the last spades game when Harper's down in the dumps by himself and, and the fellas come over and set up the spades game. Yeah. And Lance Morris Chestnut says, I'm about to run a Boston on you and they all start cracking up. Was that improvised or was that no, scripted? That was Cause that was the perfect. That, that was perfect. That oh my improvised. God. That was perfect. That was so perfect. It was, it, was, it was so good. I'm so glad he said that. And like, it was so pure and their reaction to it was pure, you know? So an interesting thing about that scene, Terrence Howard was not there that day. Then when we shot that, no wonder we, we didn't, we had to we had to reshoot just his part with green screen. So like whenever you see the the back of uh, of, of, oh, of character with the with the hood, it's somebody else. That's smart. The double. Oh, that's smart. But you know that's the it's, it's, that's the that's the magic of of, of that's film. That's the and business. Double. But yeah, no, I mean, because like, that I love was, that. Yeah, that was you know that was a scene that like and 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 you know I'd written a a a, a scene. That to follow that, like, you know, like where, where Harper always talks about, you know, his regret and whatnot. And Dana, in, to her wisdom, was like, you don't need that. This scene tells mm. it all without, mm. I'm like, okay, you know what? You're right. Let's let, let's not do that. And I just want, I wanted very minimal words. I wanted minimal sounds in there. I don't want the music to come on until, until, until Merch turned it on. Um, and just, you know, very, very few, few things that, that needed to be said. And honestly, my editor, um, Gershon, who's a brother that actually was, he and I were both, he was the intern and I was Spike's assistant on Clockers. And then on best, the first best man, he was an assistant editor. So then to come to do episode six and episode eight as an editor, you know, he, he did those, but he's the one that actually put in, um, Earth, Wind, and Fire song, Keep Your Head to the Sky. And I thought, yeah. I love this song. Is it too on the nose? I was like, you know what? It's beautiful. Let's, 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 yeah. let's do it. No, oh, no. Listen. That, I, I mean, All right, we, when that came on, take a when that note came on, yeah. when that yeah. note came on, like, keep your head to, I was like, okay, I'm yeah. done. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> I mean, I'm done. <laughs> oh, wow. What a, what a uh, we, great selection, too. We are just getting started with Malcolm D. Lee. Uh, what a collaborator you are. That's my biggest takeaway from this first part of the conversation is how, how you know what you know, but you also know how to listen and accept suggestions, man. It's fascinating. I love it. I love it. So here's Malcolm <laughs> Lee. I, that's, all I, I, that's all I want to know. All right, Malcolm, was it like uh, t 20 takes? 25 takes uh, <laughs> on Michael Smith. Did you say, no. did you say, oh man, we, we got the wrong guy. Man. Only, 16, brought in somebody 16. Else. Only 16 takes. That's it. That's all. It was, it was <laughs> great. You know? I, I, and honestly, it was great to have Michael. I mean, it, it's funny at, at the Super Bowl when we saw each other, I was like, hey, you know, we can reconnect because we had, we had met before and I was just like, you know, I may have something for you to do. And then I called him up and he was like, yo, I'm down. So it was great. Yeah. And 
Maria and Jamel. I mean, I mean that, that's yeah. also the beautiful thing about it. It's like, you know, you know, the best man touched so many people across so many, so much different um, walks of life, right? Like yeah. sports, news people, music, musicians, and like who have huge audiences, but like, like they're black, everybody's <laughs> black and they right. down be in it, man. Like, you know, Stephen A. Smith and like, and, and, and like, and, 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 and you name it. It's like, we have so many people like did cameos in this because they were just so, they just loved the franchise. And so 100%. like, I'm, I, feel, I feel like really lucky about that, you know, um, and that, 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 that like, I'm sure like some people's bosses were like, what, what, what are you doing? What, what, what's, what's such a, what show is this? <laughs> oh. 1999 wow, two two movies. I never heard of this thing, you know. But you know, the, those that know know. Well, it was a it was an honor, uh, and I'm I'm grateful for it. I'm telling you, man. Um, I have not been cool in my wife's eyes until December <laughs> of 2022. Like nothing I have done has ever like measured up to being in the best man. The final chapters. So I appreciate I, I, you uh, I, 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 me I, I, this. Oh yes, listen. I, I've been I've been living off of that for a while, and um, no, it was it was just great to, because I mean, like, and, and Michael referenced it earlier. We speak best man. You know, it's like it's one of those movies that's like referenced. It's part of the lexicon. Like we don't even know we quoting the best man at this point. Yeah, it's just exactly. it just comes out so yeah. naturally. So not only did you not only did you guys, you know, blaze a trail for Hollywood in general and Black Hollywood in particular. And, and and black actors and directors and creatives and storytellers, not only did you represent black people in a way that had not been represented much, if not at all, on screens, big or small, but you inspired people in completely different industries to be their unapologetic, authentic selves and to and to find inspiration and enjoyment from your work that Preach shaped it. who I Preach. am. Like I was in col- I was I was in college in nineteen ninety nine. So uh, there are friends, uh, every, as you've heard this before, everybody compared their friend group to the best man friend group. Everybody compared their dynamic to the best man dynamic. And so this is very, this was a formative, definitive work. If I may quote another Nia Long movie, this one with Lorenz Tate, when he is quoting George Bernard Shaw, the goal of an artist is to create the definitive work. And my brother, you have done that. Thank you. Yeah, no, I mean that again. That it was. It, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm gratified that that people feel that way. That's what that was the intention. It was certainly, you know, there's all this talk in the past three, four years about oh, representation matters. Yeah, it's always mattered, right? Like that's been my goal, like to represent us in a way that I felt was authentic, not necessarily positive. There's all this talk about in the night. Oh, we got this positive images. Like I'm not so much into positive images, but I, what I want is authenticity and to make sure that we are represented in ways, particularly black men, that, you know, were layered and uh, universal and not like educated black men on screen in the, you know, the 90s and the 80s were, were you know, very stiff and, you know, buttoned up and they checked their ethnicity at the door and all this jazz. And I'm like, that was not who I was as an undergrad you know, at Georgetown. And this is not how I interact with people, right? So like, these aren't my, these aren't representative of my friendships. Like when we're not an anomaly and we're not, you know, like a one-off, like there's several of us who are educated and articulate, that's a compliment, but you know, that that, that, that all like have lives and have have, have hangups and all kinds of stuff like that. So, you know, that's what my, my intention was to like represent us in that way. You know what, Malcolm, uh, to that point, and I was going to say this when we were uh, in the break, but I'm glad I didn't because I want to bring out, I, I, I'd rather bring it up now and just let's get an organic conversation going about it. I was blown away in, in a good way by Merch's response to the, to the premiere. I mean, mm-hmm. he was brooding. He, he had gone through something anyway. Right. He didn't really have a release for what happened. Then he's kind of reconciling his feelings about this trailer. Like, I don't like this shit. Okay. I don't like it. (laughs) And, but, but what I liked about it, what I really loved about his character is when he's walking his daughters to school 
and he says that and it tears in his eyes that hurts my feelings. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. It yeah. wasn't a uh, it wasn't a profane response. It wasn't a I, I feel this way, but I'm going to act in another way to masquerade how I'm really feeling. I thought it was real. I thought it was raw. Uh, how do you just what, what is your insight on uh, you get plenty of insight on it? Obviously, what is your insight just on that on that piece there for merch? You no, know, I, 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 I was I, I love that scene that you're referencing. You know, um, I, I wasn't there that day. Uh, Robert Townsend, um, you know, directed that scene and I had heard about it before I saw it. Right. I heard from the 80s. Like, oh, my God, Harold killed the scene today. Blah, 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 blah. I was like, of course, Harold's a brilliant actor. Right. Brilliant. And I think that, you know, I, you know, a scene I, I, I definitely rewrote and I and I and I wanted, you know, merch to have you know, this real conversation and say like, yo man, like, you know, you don't, you, you, I'm not, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of how y'all treat me. I'm tired of how I'm perceived in the world. I can't, you know, like, like you're supposed to be my friend and this is how you, this is how you think of me, you know? And by the way, I don't think Harper does think of him in that, in that way. I mean, there was definitely some, some things even in the book when, you know, in the first one, we start talking about, you didn't make, make, make me sound any kind of, I'm henpecked, da da da. Um, but yeah, I, hurt my, I think that, that was the, always the impetus I think certainly we got to it a little bit in, um, I got to it in both movies to tell you the truth. You know, like I remember, you know, I wanted to, to also not only like represent us, but I also want to normalize black black men in America, black people in America, black blackness in, in, in America. And so like, I remember the first movie, Harper, you know, screams out to Robin, I need you, right? Hey, yeah. well, you can hear audience dudes were like ah bitch bitch this this nigga da, 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 da. I'm just like <laughs> right? it's okay but that's but that was because they're uncomfortable you know with feeling yeah. and, and expressing that and like yo that's yo that's some bitch shit that's some punk stuff right and so right. but best man holiday Quentin asked Harper hey man you need some money right like yes yes and he's do you need and some money like, yes 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 and then, like when Mia dies and Lance is pouring his heart out, oh, dude, dude. crying in the audience, right? I, can, so, I still cannot watch Mia go in the ground. I cannot watch Mia go in the ground. Listen, and, we, we, and, we're, we're coming, we're, we're coming up on the end of the show. I gotta ask you because we talked about it on the phone yes. earlier, and I want to tell you for the show. What is your take on the online controversy around who's the villain between Robin and Harper? Because a lot of people are blaming Robin for taking. Um, Mia to Ghana, and I'm like, Harper's an a-hole. I mean, <laughs> but anyway, you know, you're so funny. <laughs> I, 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 first of all, I never thought my show or my movie had like a villain in it, right? Like these are all these people that was never the intent. Like these are just people, right? And but it's good. It's it's always good to have you know you know spark healthy debate. But there's a lot of people that are coming for Robin, like you know, like like oh my god, she was terrible. She's trash. She shouldn't have done that. Yada yada yada. I'm like. I think it's a lot of, and it's a lot of women and a lot of dudes too, but a lot of women that are like not depending on that think, oh, she's wishy washy. She was the second choice anyway. Blah blah blah. I think you know people have to like understand, you know, where they are, where they were in their mid twenties, right? And like, and when they say, oh, oh when, if a person, that, the person that you're with, asked you to marry, and yes, there was some extenuating circumstances and some things that happened, but hey, like. Uh, he loves me. I think he loves me, and I love him, right? So let's we're gonna make a go of this. I think like what you, Robin's finally in this show, like getting her voice, standing up for herself, and more than that, I think Robin is disgruntled with America mm -hmm. and the status quo, and always fighting, mm -hmm. and she doesn't she want to conscious. fight, right? Yeah, she doesn't want to yeah. like, you know live this life where like she has to always, you know, be de defending stuff and what she just wants to live as a person. Yeah. And I think Harper has been, you know, a little stubborn and stuck in his ways and not giving. Now she set it up that way. She certainly yeah. like, gave the raw rubber, but she's like, you know what? No longer. And she's dropped those breadcrumbs from the very start of the so, series. Hey, hey, we got a minute left, man. Um, and Robin is representative of how fearless you guys were with tackling issues beyond their world, by the way. Bravo on that. 
I've read you say yep. several times where you've taken these characters as far as you can go in your mind. That 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 you're done with is it is it really really done or is there any change in your mind maybe down the road? Could we see an elderly best man <laughs> reboot? Best man, I don't know. best man, assisted living, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but it won't be it won't be anytime soon. There'll be a lot of stories from Malcolm D. Lee in between now and yes, then, sir. God willing. You know what I mean? Yes, but sir. I I I'm, I'm, I I think okay. This is this was meant to be the final chapters. That's what I, that's all I got. Well, we we appreciate you, all your work, girl. Appreciate shirt, you, man. Roll bounce, appreciate undercover you. brother, soul man, night night school, space jam, uh, new legacy, like just and obviously the best man franchise, brother. Thank you so much. Here are your flowers. Please receive them, and take a moment. I know you worry about what's next, but the culture loves you and and thanks you for this, man. Appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for having me on. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.